Hi guys, welcome back to Hack TV and this is the part 3 of Jump Start with Node.js series natin. If nasundan mo yung series na to and napanood mo na yung part 1 and part 2, by this time, marunong ka nang gumawa ng sariling module and gamitin sa parts ng application na gagawin mo. Kung hindi pa napapanood yung part 1 and part 2, ilalagay ko yung link dito sa taas, pati na rin sa description below. On this video, ipapakita ko sa inyo kung paano gamitin yung built-in modules ng Node.js. But before we start, Please click the subscribe button and hit yung na rin notification bell para ma-update din kayo sa future videos na ang channel na to. So let's start! Sa mga previous videos, yung mga application or yung program na ginawa natin, mostly sa console lang natin siya yung output On this video, para maipakita ko sa inyo kung paano gamitin yung core modules ng Node.js, gagawa tayo ng isang HTTP web server. Para ma-explain ko sa inyo kung ano yung gamit ng web server, let's look at this diagram. Para ma-access ni user ang isang web application, kailangan niya na isang web client. This is in the form of a website or a web page running on a browser. Sa web client, dito may kita ni user yung information na meron ng isang web application. Dito din siya mag input ng data para i-process sa isang web application. Yung data na ini-input ng isang user sa isang web client is pinapasa siya sa web server. Siya ay nagpa-process ng mga data na in-input ng isang user sa isang web client. After niya i-process yung mga inputs na yun, magpo-provide siya ngayon ng data or na information pabalik sa web client. So yun yung information na nakikita ng user sa isang web client. Si web client and si web server nagko-communicate sila over the internet using the HTTP. It stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Siya yung application layer protocol na ginagamit to transmit data. Gawa muna tayo ng bagong JavaScript file. I will name it as nodeserver.js. The first built-in module na i-discuss ko is the HTTP module. This module contains members na magagamit natin to create a web server and transmit data over the HTTP. To access the module, we need to use the HTTP keyword. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung argument na pinasa natin on the require function doesn't have a file location. Since this is a built-in module, keyword is enough. And si Node.js na yung bahala mag-resolve ng mga files na kailangan with this module. Let's now create our server. First, we will define an object. And tatawagin natin yung HTTP create server function. Basically, the create server function will create an instance of server object. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung argument na pinasa natin on this function is also a function. So, yan yung mga tinatawag nating callback functions. Sila yung mga function na pinapasa sa isang function and tatawagin later on inside of that function. Yung callback function na pinasa natin dito is meron dalawang parameter. Yung first parameter natin represents the request message or yung request object natin. Dito natin may kita yung information regarding sa request na ginawa with this server. Yung second parameter naman natin is for the response object. This object will be used to specify yung response na need gawin ni server when someone accesses it. Let's write an example. First, I'm going to write a response. Tatawagin ko yung write function ng response object natin. So itong string na to yung may kita natin kapag in-access na natin yung web server na to. Next, we will call the response end function. This will mark the end of the response. Importante itong function na to kasi kung hindi natin to ilalagay, the request will never end. And the client will keep on waiting for the response to end. Now that we have a server object, 
we need to specify yung location kung saan natin siya gustong i-access. To do that, we will call the server.listen function. And we will pass a port number as an argument. Let's save this one and go to our command line to run the file. On our command line, let's run the following command. Kung mapapansin nyo, we cannot see any output dito sa console natin. Nakikita lang natin yung blinking cursor. It tells us na currently nagrarun na yung server natin and we can now access that on our web browser. We can access the web server on our local host port 8080. Let's type in the following URL. And may kita natin ngayon yung response na in-specify natin on our server object. Back on our command line, our server is in the state of running. To terminate the program, just hit the control plus C. Let's add information dun sa response natin. First, I'm going to assign a status code. Si status code is a 3-digit integer that has a corresponding message. Kinagami siya to describe yung response ng server whether it's successful or an error. So in this case, we use the code 200. It indicates that the response is successful. Next, we will add the header. So si header, it gives additional information sa response natin na ayun natin makita dun sa response body. Usually, ginagamit siya for security purposes or additional process using a server-side scripts. So, we will pass the header name and the value of it. it tells na yung content ng response natin is an HTML. We can also identify yung path name na gusto i-access ng request. So, baguhin natin yung request body and we access the URL property of the request object. This object contains yung path ng request natin. Let's save this one. Run ulit natin yung server. And refresh the web page. Sa ngayon, slash pala yung nakikita natin sa response body kasi wala pa nakaspecify na path name. Ngayon, baguhin natin yung URL and magdagdag tayo ng path name. Ayan, nakikita na natin ngayon yung path name sa response body. A more complex URL can look like this. So, ayan yung mga parts ng URL. So, we have the host name, the path, and the query. Now, pwede natin gamitin si URL built-in module to get the information of the URL na receive ng server natin. It contains members that will parse and break down the parts of the URL to easily identify its value. Let's reference the module. Sa loob ng create server function, I will define an object named parse URL. I will assign a value and will call the url.parse function and pass the request URL. On the second argument, I will pass true para ma-include yung value ng query string natin. For this example, I'm going to use the console just to show the values of the properties na meron yung parse URL object natin. First, let's write the URL path name. Next is yung search string natin. And last is yung query object. So 
So if we run the program and access the server with the following URL, we will get the following values. So by now, we already know how to identify the URL of the request. Yung mga websites na ina-access natin is nagko-consist siya ng mga HTML files. And when we send the URL of the page we want to access, the server will render the HTML sa browser kung available siya. Para magawa natin siya, kailangan natin gamitin si File System Module of Node.js. Si File System Module contains members that will allow us to create, update, delete, or rename a file. So on this server, gagamitin natin si File System Module to read the content of the HTML file and render it sa response body. I will first create the HTML files. A few moments later. I am done now on creating two HTML pages. Ito yung files sa susubukan natin i-render with our Node server. So we have the about.html and the home.html. On our Node server.js, let's now reference the file system module. I will restructure our callback sa create server function. I will remove the necessary lines. Next, I will define a variable for the file name. Yung value nito is yung path name nung parse URL. Pero ralagyan natin siya ng prefix na period to indicate the root folder. And we can now call the fsreadfile function. Yung first argument na kailangan natin ipasa is the file name. Next argument will be a callback function. So kailangan niya ng two arguments, one for the error and one for the data. Inside the callback function, we will first handle the error. If may na-encounter si server on reading the file, we will just return an error response. So let's set the status code to 404. Let's copy this uh, set header and write uh, response body. Lagay natin file not found. Kung wala naman error, we can return a successful response. Let's just uh, use this code. Copy natin or cut natin, lagay natin sa loob. And for the response body, we will write the data. On the data object, dyan natin may kita or makukuha yung value na nabasa dun sa file na gusto natin i-access. And let's convert this to string. After the ifL statement, we can now return the response.end. So let's remove this one. Let's save the file and let's run this server. And ito na yung output ng no code na ginawa natin. If I try to access the about.html, may kita nyo na it will render the specific uh, HTML file. Going back to home, and when we try to access a non-existing file, it will throw a file not found. And that's our web server that was built using Node.js. Kung nagustuhan mo yung video na to, please click the like button and i-share mo na rin to sa mga kakilala mo na gustong matuto ng programming, especially Node.js. Kung may mga questions kayo, just write in the comment section below. Before I end the video, gusto mo na magpasalamat sa lahat ng mga nag-subscribe na sa channel na to. So kung hindi ka pa nakapag-subscribe sa channel na to, huwag mong kalimutan pindutin yung subscribe button below. Hanggang sa muli, bye bye!